Hey guys, it's Greg Alexander. And today I want to do part three of my series of three biggest mistakes that fishermen make. The first part was picking the wrong equipment. That video is right here if you haven't seen it. The second part was your favorite lure syndrome is right here if you haven't seen it. And this third video in the series and the final of the three for the biggest mistakes that fishermen make is having the wrong approach. And that can mean a lot of different things. The first thing it can mean is you're not applying the proper technique to the situation that is in front of you. For example, you're throwing a wacky rig Senko with an open hook, and this is an extreme situation, into a lily pad field and you're throwing eight pound test line. Wrong approach. Although, sure, it'll get bites. You'll, you won't catch that fish 99% of the time. The wrong approach. The wrong approach is not understanding how seasonal patterns affect behavior of fish, where they're supposed to be at what time of year, and what type of lures that you can generate strikes on. And this is the hardest of the three because this is not really so much a mistake as it is, well it could be a mistake, but it's not so much a mistake as it is just not knowing. And so in order to know you have to educate yourself and the best way to educate yourself you know, you can, you can watch my videos, you can watch other people's videos, you can read, you know, Bassmaster Magazine or, or MLF publications or watch any of these online tournaments and things that are going on. You can watch all that stuff and that'll help you learn for sure. But the absolute best way to learn is actually spend time out on the water doing it yourself, hands on, you've experienced it, you've felt, you felt what was going on, you understand it starts to click for you completely because you're actually going through it yourself. So I'm going to help you a little bit and give you just a basic understanding. In the winter time, you need to fish for winter fish. When somebody, some people say, well, you know, I, I caught one, you know, on a buzz bait last winter. Uh, okay. Well, you can do that. And that happens on occasion. But to put yourself in the best position to catch fish on a regular basis, you have to understand where the fish are seasonally. And in the wintertime, cold water situations, the fish are going to be slow, lethargic. They're going to go to places of most stability in the water system that they can find. And they're not going to eat on a regular basis. So understanding that, you know, you need to adapt your techniques to that slower, more finesse type baits, or if you're going for one big bite, a big bait where a big fish will eat just every once in a while, but it wants a big meal. So you understand that about winter. And then you need to understand about pre-spawn. The fisher get anxious. They want to feed up for the spawn. They're the heaviest they're going to be all year. You're going to catch some of the biggest fish of the year. They're going to be looking for a big meal. So, that time of year is probably going to be your best time of year to try to throw bigger baits. You can still continue to throw smaller baits, but you're not putting yourself in a position to have some of the best days of your life fishing. And then the spawn. The fish are going to be moving into spawning areas, hard bottom areas, protected areas, places where their eggs are not going to get silted out or washed out by current tide, boat traffic, things like that. And put yourself in those positions and understand that they're going to probably a lot of times be in pairs, a smaller fish and a larger fish. And a lot of the, the more successful fishing that time of year is going to be done with your eyes. And I will be doing a video in the near future on bed fishing. And then you have the post spawn and understanding the post spawn that the post spawn, the fish are coming off of the spawn. They go into a little bit of a trance just for a short period of time after the spawn. And then they want to feed and feed hard. And they usually are feeding on the next thing that comes shallow, which a lot of times it's a blue, the bluegill spawn. 
and then shortly after the bluegill spawn or maybe even the same time you'll get a shad spawn so understanding that you're going to want to target bluegill type baits a lot of top water baits at that time of year or something shad spawning looking you know if the shad are actually spawning and then you get into summer and in most places you know you're talking about either deeper fish or thick grass type fish or evening morning and evening fishing is best or night fishing and then you get into fall where the fish are getting real finicky they're spread out they're chasing bait they become pelagic they tend to be out away from cover a lot more than they are at any other time of year and are very spread out and not in big schools a lot of times so understand that and then we're back into you know winter again so you have to understand those seasonal patterns. If you don't understand those seasonal patterns, then you don't have the right approach to approach them with the proper tools, the proper lures, the proper rods, reels, like we talked about. And, you know, you're chasing them with your favorite bait, like we talked about, and they're not even there. So then after understanding the seasonal patterns of fish, you have to understand bait selection. And baits are just basically tools. And you need to always be using the right tool for the right job, right? You don't use a screwdriver as a hammer. You don't use a hammer as a screwdriver. You don't use a circular saw to cut down, cut down trees. You use a chainsaw. So, you know, you can have an effect with the wrong tool, but you're not putting yourself in a position to win. So you got to break these habits of, I like, to throw this it's my favorite thing to do and everybody likes to do certain things better than others I mean certain fishermen are known for certain presentations over others and when the rubber meets the road and you can't get them to bite on other things that we're always going to gravitate back towards the things that we do best and we may succeed or we may not but you need to gravitate towards the right tool for the right job you need to have grass baits when you're fishing grass you need to have top water baits when the fish are chasing on top you need to have bottom bouncing baits when you're working gravel points and drop offs and ledges and things like that you need to have crank baits of various sizes shapes depths and vibrations and colors depending on the water clarity the size of the fish how deep you're trying to fish you need to have all these different things. You need to understand the difference between can I get away with a quarter ounce weight or do I need a half ounce weight? Would a Carolina rig work better in this situation than a Texas rig? You know, would all these different techniques and styles, am I applying them properly for what I'm trying to do? And, you know, the best way to tell whether or not you're applying your technique properly for what's going on is feedback. If you're not getting any feedback, in other words, you're not catching fish or at least losing fish or getting any bites at all or very few bites, then that's the feedback that is telling you it's time to do something different. And if you don't fully understand all these techniques, then that takes time, I understand. But you have to start experimenting, you know, on your own, you know, I put myself in bad situations sometimes in tournaments because I get lazy. I call it lazy. I keep throwing this lure thinking that, well, the next spot they'll bite it on or the next spot. And I, sometimes you get stuck jumping around thinking it's a spot thing when it's not a spot thing at all. It's a presentation thing where if you just change the presentation, you'll catch them. Now, I remember a day years ago when the Senko was first coming out everybody wasn't even on it yet I mean this is in the early 2000s and me and my buddy were up pre-fishing for a tournament and we'd caught a few fish on outgoing tide but nothing really really special and the tide started coming in and it started getting dirty and we thought well it's over it, it's it's over we're, we're done they're not going to bite anymore today and my buddy picked up this new Senko and he threw it out in the middle of the grass and he caught one like the first cast. I was like, wow. And then he threw it out again and he caught one the second cast. 
and he caught like four or five fish. Boom, bang, boom, bang, boom. And I couldn't get bit during the standard things that we were doing. So if I'd have ran around thinking that it was a spot thing, then I would have missed those fish altogether when it wasn't a spot thing. It was a presentation thing. If the habitat is there for the fish and the time of year that the fish are supposed to be there, you can pretty much be sure that there's fish there. Now it's just a matter of putting the proper presentation to the fish that they will respond to and you can catch. So you just got to go through, and I've said it before, and I'll say it probably say it again. You got to continue to go through your progressions until you find out what these fish are going to eat once you know what time of year they're supposed to be where, then you put that all together and you'll catch more fish. So don't make that mistake. Don't get lazy. Keep going through your progressions. Understand seasonal patterns. Apply the right lures, the right presentation, the right equipment like we talked about. Get away from your favorite lures and you will become a better fisherman. So again, if you like my channel, you want to follow me on a regular basis, please hit the subscribe button, the like button, the little alert bell thing on there. Put a comment in the bottom, share it with your friends. I appreciate you watching and have a blessed day.